You're about to find out how Sabretooth likes to celebrate Wolverine's birthday. It's springtime somewhere in rural America, as a couple of kids argue about who gets to eat the last slice of that afternoon's delicious midday snack, Mom's Cherry Pie. One of the kids, Victor Creed, the man who would one day be known as the psychopathic mutant, Sabretooth, pleads with his brother Luther to give him the final slice of the pastry. He tells his brother that it's the only thing he wants, nothing more. But Luther isn't having it. He pokes and prods Victor, taunting him with their mom's home-baked treat and telling the younger Creed that he doesn't have to do Jack. It's Luther's birthday, after all, and he can do whatever he wants. To add insult to injury, Luther utters four words that will just send Victor over the edge. This pie's all mine. And just as soon as he says it, the younger Creed sibling lunges at Luther, and all the birthday boy can do is call for their mother. Hearing this, the Creed matriarch enters their kitchen, threatening the boys that he'd tell their father if they'd been horsing around again. But what Mama Creed wasn't expecting was that this wasn't just your ordinary case of boys being boys. As she finds Victor chomping on a slice of cherry pie, fangs bared and lips red with blood and syrup, as he sits beside Luther's lifeless body. Oh, Ma, we were only playing, Victor says with nary a hint of remorse on his face. That same year, during a late night in autumn, the Creed patriarch tortures Victor inside their basement. Both his parents believe that the boy has been overcome by the devil, as he pulls out Victor's sharp fangs with a pair of pliers. Papa Creed tells Victor that he'll keep doing this until Satan gets out of his body. He had already lost one son to the devil, and he sure as hell won't lose another. Victor's father leaves the basement, leaving him alone in the dark with his mom. The Creed matriarch tries to help her son clean up after the torture that his father put him through. But Victor has resigned. He tells his mom to just let him go and let it happen. Being the good mother that she is, Mama Creed tells Victor about her fears that his dad might just end up killing him one day. But in perhaps one of the coldest moments in Marvel history ever, Victor tells his mother not to be scared of the Creed patriarch. He's scared of me. Shock sets into Victor's mom when she hears this. And all she can do is make for the stairs, out of that damn basement, and as far away as possible from what Victor has become. A year passes, and it's springtime again. Victor struggles to get off the chains holding him in the basement. He thrashes and bites, and he successfully dislodges one of the locks from the wall. But he's not out of the proverbial woods just yet. There's still the other cuff holding him prisoner. Despite being clearly winded, Victor continues to pull and tug at the remaining chain until fatigue sets in. His struggles falling short, Victor sits in the middle of the basement and thinks of one last ditch effort to free himself from his prison. He bares his fangs after giving his arm one good look. Freed, Victor enters the Creed home, where he sees his mom and dad at the kitchen table. The two can only stop in their tracks and stare in horror, with Mama Creed holding a freshly baked cherry pie in her hands. As they discover that Victor chewed off his own arm to free himself from his restraints down in the basement. I told you, Ma, you should have listened. Was the last thing they ever heard before the crazed, feral teenager rushed and gored them to death. With the entire Creed household now food for the worms, Victor enjoys Mom's cherry pie all to himself. He remembers Luther and utters the words, Happy birthday before running off into the night, his severed hand in tow. More years pass, and Victor, now a grown man, wanders around an American frontier town. A certain curious scent alerts him to something off in the distance, just before a man approaches him and offers Victor some hospitality. The feral brute obliges and hands his fur coat to the man before entering the local saloon. There's an obvious smirk on Sabretooth's face when he sees that there's a ruckus going on inside the establishment as a stout bruiser with long sideburns tussles with a group of drunks. Not wanting to miss out, Victor joins in and proceeds to give the local bums a beating. And when all is said and done, he and his newfound friend share a pint in front of the bar, amidst the unconscious bodies of the alcoholics they just brutalized. He tells Victor he didn't need any help with the bums, to which Victor tells him that he knew so. But Victor saw something in this man, the moment he laid eyes on him, that they're not so different, that they can both look after themselves. The sideburns sporting man asks Victor if he views that sort of ruckus as a way to play. And Victor tells him, no, it was just a bit of exercise. My playing? Hell, it don't look like no one else's. You'll know when I start playing. The two continue to bond over drinks. Victor asks his new buddy how the fight started, and he says it's because the fools made a joke about his woman. 
and as if on cue, a beautiful Native American lady steps into the saloon and calls him by his name, Logan. The lady Silver Fox has come to fetch her boyfriend. Logan introduces Victor to his lady before the two scamper off upstairs to the private quarters. It's all copacetic, as Logan tells Victor to just holler at him if there's trouble around. Victor obliges, but not before telling Logan something very, very ominous about Silver Fox. Be careful. She's a real pretty one. She'll make you feel bad eventually. They always do. And with that, Victor raises a glass to the two lovebirds as they go their merry way. Months pass in the old frontier town. And on this cold winter night, Logan holds Silver Fox's lifeless body in his arms, dejected as he carries her torn body as the townspeople look on. Out of nowhere, Logan hears an all too familiar voice. Told you so. It's Victor, and he wishes Logan a happy birthday after taking a swig from his bottle. Not another word was said before the two mutants lunged at each other. Logan knew in an instant who did this to his woman, and he's going to make Victor pay. The burly, self-regenerating men tussle in front of the saloon. Logan grabs a piece of wood, ready to bash Sabretooth's head in. But Victor proves to be the better fighter, as he grabs Logan by the wrist, takes the two-by-four and proceeds to repeatedly whack the clawed Canuck with it. Victor relishes the violence, and to Logan's credit, he knew he was beaten. So he ran off into the snow-covered wilderness. Sure, Sabretooth could have chased him right then and there, but where's the fun in that? Decades pass, and it's now the middle of the 20th century. Victor sits in on an interview for a wet works job at the CIA. He's not surprised, but no less pleased, to find out that he's a shoe-in for the position. A black ops agent with no moral quandaries about doing the dirty work whatsoever. The interviewer welcomes him to the covert Team X as she shakes Victor's hand. The feral mutant, when not viciously murdering innocent people, exudes that Burt Reynolds-like charm as they walk out of the office. Just then, the interviewer tells Sabretooth that she'd like for him to meet the other Team X member that they'd just hired. They're going to be working together closely, after all. Not a single word was uttered when Logan socks Victor in the jaw, the moment he exited the interviewer's office. The feral mass-murdering mutant is pleasantly surprised to find out that he and his old friend have crossed paths again. He taunts the future X-Man, telling him if he's come early for his birthday present, to which Logan replies that things have changed. Back in their first encounter, Logan was young and stupid. Victor adds that it doesn't matter how much time passes or how smart Logan gets. He's going to kick his stout butt when he puts hands on him. Unsurprisingly, the two mutants get down to business and start wailing on each other. Meanwhile, the interviewer calls for guards to put a stop to this and bring in tranquilizers, nets and tank, if need be. Whatever works to get these two beasts to stop wrecking the hallowed halls of the CIA. All of a sudden, the head of Team X approaches the interviewer. It's William Stryker, and they now have confirmation that Logan and Victor do share some personal history. Now, will this spell trouble for their covert ops? Not at all, because Stryker justifies that it was a good idea all along to have the two mutants' minds wiped. A couple of mind wipes and just as many years later, the superhero who would one day be known as Wolverine and the villain, otherwise known as Sabretooth, have become buddies. They outdrink their fellow Team X members tonight, and Logan takes this moment to thank Victor for saving him during an earlier mission. Logan tells him it's his birthday today, and we all know what that means. Hell, Victor, of all people, knows what that means. So, he tells his buddy that they should celebrate Logan's birthday properly with a solid right hook to the jaw. Logan protests and asks Victor why the hell he punched him. And, true to his character, the blonde feral mutant tells his friend he has no idea, but it sure does feel good as they start to square up against each other. More years pass, and Victor has now found himself at a bar in West Berlin. Logan storms into the place, calling for him. The future X-Man is furious. He reprimands Victor for how much of a crapshoot their recent mission has gone, thanks to his gung-ho attitude. Of course, Victor being Victor, he doesn't care one bit about Logan's opinions of him, about how Victor has killed mercilessly and thoughtlessly over the course of his stint at Team X. But this was the last straw. Victor really messed up this time when Logan informed him that Janice Hollenbeck the woman whom Victor most recently murdered in cold blood was their extraction target. She should have been rescued, not shot. Logan accuses Sabretooth of not even having a good reason for killing Hollenbeck, but Victor disagrees. He has his motives. It's just that someone like Logan couldn't work it out. Logan has had it up to here when he hears Victor tell him this. 
so he grabs his fellow Team X member by the head and smashes it on the countertop. At this point, we know what's coming. The moment Victor raises his shard-embedded head and tells Logan, At last. The two black ops agents bring the beat down on each other. And after five minutes, Logan has had enough. He asks Victor why he did it. Why he killed Hollenbeck and made a mess out of an otherwise simple extraction op. Victor, with the sinister grin on his face, tells Logan one thing. Haven't you looked at the calendar? Yeah, happy birthday. And it's here that Victor finally reveals why he keeps celebrating Logan's birthday in this rather unusual way. He tells him that it's meant to be a present, a way to help Logan finally learn to embrace the beast in the same way that Victor did with his. Logan's had enough though. He resigns from Team X right then and there and warns his old partner to stay out of his way. Of course, Victor isn't convinced. As he tells Logan, they'll see each other soon enough. A decade passes. Logan is at a dive bar where he hands the bartender a wad of cash in exchange for closing up early and disappearing for the rest of the night. He lets her know that it's his birthday, that he's expecting company tonight, and that he's going to need some privacy for what's about to happen. The bartender takes the cash and leaves, all the while telling Logan that it's nice to have someone to spend your birthday with. Oh, if only she knew what he meant. With the barkeep gone, Victor enters the bar and greets his old friend. After decades of this gruesome, violent birthday tradition. Even Victor has started to show some signs of fatigue from the festivities. He asks Logan if he wants to skip all the pleasantries and just proceed with seeing how many teeth he can fit down Wolverine's throat. Logan, on the other hand, tells Sabretooth that he's actually just done with this whole ordeal. He's had enough, and he means it. Victor couldn't believe what he just heard, so he asks Wolverine if he ever even really gave the idea of letting loose and giving in to the proverbial beast within. But Logan's not going to be swayed. He tells Victor it's over, but Victor thinks otherwise. He believes that, like him, Logan loves the thrill of the fight, with all the blood and violence that comes with it. Still, Logan remains unconvinced as he makes his way out of the bar, telling Victor that, There isn't a damn thing you can do to start me. Now this is where we get undeniable proof that Sabretooth is and will always be Wolverine's greatest nemesis. Because just as Logan was about to leave, Victor utters two words that would dig up memories for Logan. Memories that go back right to their very first meeting. Remember Silver Fox. Without hesitation, Logan lets out his trademark adamantium claws with a couple of resounding snits after hearing this from Victor. And just as when they first met, Sabretooth bears his claws and tells the X-Man, This ain't fighting. This ain't even killing. This is just playing. What do you think of Sabretooth and Wolverine's relationship? Do you think this birthday tradition is going to ever end between the two? Let's talk about it in the comments section below. And to be the first to see all the amazing videos we have in store for you, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell. We'll see you in the next one, True Believers.